So good afternoon everyone. Today and this Thursday, we are learning about the building code and regulation. What is building code? A building code is set of rule that specify the minimum standard for the building construction. So when you consider to build your project, your building have to meet the, this minimum the requirement from the IBC. You have to be meeting the, this minimum requirement for your design. So today, we're just looking at the basic consideration for understanding IBC and this Thursday, we're using the, this information to find out the maximum floor area and maximum floor height for your project. Okay? And then we're just looking at why we need a building code for your project. The main purpose of building code are to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. Also, it protects your property. So means, when you design your project, you have to be concerned about the all healthy and the safety and welfare. The IBC qualified these all three important part of your design to meeting the minimum requirement for the health and safety and welfare. So the building code is available to set the minimum standard. I think that is really important point for understanding about the, your the building code. So minimum standard. Okay. So this minimum standard means you have to be living in the minimum habitable condition, right? So that's why this IBC set the minimum standard to set the some construction quality and the structure integrity and durability livability, accessibility, and fire safety. The accessibility is more related to the ADA issues and fire safety, it can deciding about your construction type, it can deciding about your maximum building area, maximum building height. We talk about the ADA next year more and then we more talk about the fire safety this semester and we talk about this fire safety again the next semester and next year okay so just kind of understanding for the your building code it is for setting the minimum standard for your living so how do we apply the, this building code your building code can apply to the new construction and the renovation project and maintenance of the building and revision of unsafe building it means the building code required every single construction type okay so that's why you have to meeting that this minimum request from the IBC you have to be meeting that this requirement for designing any types of the construction the most city county and state have an own department to handle the building code and the planning issues how does the regular agency enforce the code issues to the project so your building code and zoning regulation and the building permit enforced by AHJ, which is authorities having jurisdiction. It is found from mostly the city. City usually control the, this, the building permit and the city regulation. So that's why you usually getting the building permit set and the planning permit set from the city person. So the city enforced the, this building code and then zoning regulation. So they are enforced through the building permit from the drawing permit. So means to construct your project, you actually have a building permit. So without the permit, you cannot construct your project on the site. So first you have to get in the building permit from the city and you can construct your project on the site. It means the city allowed to build the, your project basically from the, your drawing. And at, during the construction time, the planner check, plan checker or the city person come to your site and then they just inspect your the site periodically. Because um, sometimes the, when they getting the permit and then contract and architect change the drawing and then they redraw out the, um, the drawing for the construction and then change the, some, the system and program. It's not 
permit from the their building code. So means city periodically inspecting the site. They just compare the permitted drawing and the constructor condition. If it different, the city uh, ask you to prove giving the some fine. Also, if you fail, they can actually stop the construction. That's why when you're getting the permit, you have to be meeting the this drawing the submission to construct your project. Okay? And after construction, the city also certificate over the occupation. What is occupation? It's more about the program. So it means when you're getting the your building as the residence, okay? So it means after construction, this space have to be using as the residence. However, if it used the different purpose, for example, it is permit as the residence, but you use as the office building, this is illegal. So that's why city certificate your occupancy after construction. So your building code issued by the legal document. When you process proceed big and complex project, you usually hire the lawyer because it's very difficult to process every single point from the architect position. So that's why your lawyer the manage the project between the architect and owner and architect and city. Because sometimes we miss the lots of legal things when you perform the, your project by yourself when you work in a complex project. However, when you're just working the simple project like a single family house or the small commercial or small multi-story building you can just handle all, most of this. However, if your building is getting bigger and complex, you better to hire a lawyer to control the, these legal issues. Um, but also have to be considered about the rejection. When you try to get the building permit through your design, it will take a lot of time. Usually like a small city, it only takes a few weeks, but it sometimes takes a few months. However, like a big city, especially in San Francisco, Took, took a while, it usually takes around one year to two years to getting the permit. So means if you fail the your if you fail to getting the building permit, you losing the loss of time, you losing the loss of money. Right? So because you have to really prepare the the failed part for getting the another permit. So means when you reject from the city, your owner is pretty upset right because about the they have to be wait another few months is to getting the another permit usually sometimes getting the usually getting the some this leap permit process much quicker than the the permit the project at the first time however still you're losing the few weeks to the few months okay so means they losing the time they losing the money a lot so that's why to avoid this rejection, you have to be prepared your document well. You have to be draw your drawing properly. Okay, so if you kind of getting a reject, so probably owner probably is not happy with your the position. So that's why to just kind of uh, extending your job better. So you have to be avoid this rejection issue from the city. Okay. So next video, I just gonna introduce the how to get in the building permit. I already introduced about uh, some process to getting the permit. I think this per this video is very well the present about the uh, the building permit process with the city. So let's watch this video and then keep talking about the IBC. How to get a building permit. Shelter is one of our most basic needs as human beings. But to build shelter, in most cases, you need a building permit and certificate of occupancy. Step 1. Complete an architectural as-built drawing. As-builts are the documentation of any items or structures that have been built or changed at the site, such as walls, windows and awnings, or plants and other topography. As-builds are the translation between the real world and the regulations of building and safety. They're used for site documentation, the basis for architectural drawings, and inventory and archiving. Accuracy is essential. Several trips to the job site may be required. 
Take your own measurements as much as possible. Step 2. Schematic Design Once you have translated your existing as-built situation into drawings, you can make major design decisions and address other considerations. Step 3. Design Development the schematic design is finalized and consultants are hired as specialists for detailed design requirements. Step 4. Construction Documents An architect uses a set of construction documents to show the finalized design in a way that building officials and construction professionals can understand. It helps them prep, review, and coordinate the project. The documents include perspective drawings, floor plans, and more. When your documents are done, your construction contract ensures that everything is performed to your specifications. Many architectural firms offer project management to ensure your design is moving smoothly from as-built to building permit approval. Step 5. Submitting your plan for approval. The city must determine that your building is in compliance with population density, urban aesthetics, and zoning laws. The state must also determine that your building design will function in normal and in some cases extreme circumstances. Certain departments will need to sign off that your plans cooperate with existing services. Lastly, celebrate. Now that you've completed these steps, you can get your building permit and ultimately your certificate of occupancy. Thanks for watching the video. For more information about so I will see the International Building Code. Um, this book, the developed by ICC International Code Council, but some state have own building code, like OBC, Ohio State. They have own building code. Especially California, they have a specific the code regulation because of the earthquake and more strict the ADA issues. So California used the CBC, which is the California Building Code, but every IBC, but every CBC, even they were on the building code from the state, they are basically developed from the IBC. That's why it's very similar, the format they have. To understanding the IBC, you are pretty easy to understanding local code as well, because it developed from the IBC. So we talk about ICC. So International Code Council. So International Code Council is a member focused association. It is dedicated to develop code and standard. So ICC published IBC and International Fire Code, International the Mechanical Code, International Plumbing Code. So they developed this code for the building project. So most U.S. communities and many global market choosing the international court, but it's actually not a very international, it's mostly using in U.S. and Canada. But they just called international building court. So let's talk about the IBC. So when you design your project, you need to consider and apply IBC. So I just summarized the five basic evaluation steps. I think this is an important position to understanding about the IBC and I think it is the most important the part in IBC. So basic evaluation step number one, it determined occupancy. What is occupancy? Occupancy is the program, what kind of program you proposed and it determined the type of construction. So what kind of a structure type you use. So basically from the occupancy and construction type, you can decide and determine the maximum allowable height and maximum allowable area and also it determines the egress requirement how many exit stairs you needed how much space you needed for the exit passageway so it determines this egress requirement but we have to be understanding about the meaning about egress what is about the egress when you have an emergent when you have an earthquake or fire on your building you have to be escaping from the your space to the outside it is called egress passageway it is evacuation from the space to the outside so eva egress is one of the most important part for your code consideration and also it's very strict to designing about the egress part in ibc so we more talk about the egress the next semester and next year so we just kind of learning about 
to designing the stair basically from the egress requirement to designing about the passageway basically from the egress and you decide how many exit stair how many exit you need basically from the egress requirement and you also verified accessibility provisions the accessibility basically from the ADA so you remember about what is ADA it is required for the everyone so means we also talk about ADA issue and ADA learning next semester and next year so now we talk about the determine occupancy from the IBC what is about the occupancy we talk about the, this is a program related the building occupancy refer to categorizing structure based on their uses what kind of a program the which uses happening in this location the building occupancy is primarily categorizing by fire code enforcement. So you just kind of have an answer by yourself when you propose the, your the occupancy. First question, can occupant help themselves? What is this meaning? Someone living in your designed space, your occupant can help themselves or they need some assistant. So this is simply comparing the between the classroom and hospital. When you're just designing the hospital, they need assistance to escaping the space when you have a fire. So what I mean, the, when you're designing the hospital, it requires the more fire registering rather than the classroom because they take much more time because they need assistance to escaping from the space. Okay. So next one is there highly hazardous material in the space so it means if your space has the explosion material you have to protect your space much better than just normal classroom because it has the explosion material there so it means the code require the much strict fire requirement so next one do people know their way are they are familiar with the space I think you know, already know about the KP it means when you're designing about the classroom so you so you pretend everyone already know about the exit passes however when you design the theater so probably many people first time to visit the theater it means they don't know about the how they escaping from the space so from this reason so when you're designing about the this type of theater you need a more strict the regulation for the fire comparing to the classroom and then occupant vulnerable due to age ability or activity it is pretty similar as the number one question so when you're designing the hospital and elderly house they are they need a assistant to escaping the from the space when it has the problem comparing to the classroom you guys are young and then it's much easier to escaping from the space but when you're designing about the elderly house they are old they need the assistant they are slower than the younger people so that's why it is much strict the fire regulation comparing to the this classroom building okay so let's look at the detail so when you looking at the IBC chapter 3 it indicating about the different occupancy so there were 10 occupancy assembly business education factory and industrial high hazard institutional mercantile residential storage and utility so we're looking at the assembly occupancy first the type a is assembly group a occupancy it is for the gathering space such as civic social or religious function so theater like auditorium lecture hall nightclub like recreation like restaurant museum library like a sport arena it is the A occupancy, okay? So it is kind of a, also, also categorized A1 to A5, but so you can simply open the chapter 3, they are just indicating the different the program basically from the A1 through the A5 category. So what is about the B occupancy? B is business. It includes the use of a building or structure for office, professional, or service type transaction but it is kind of more about the office building like a bank office post office it set up the higher education 
So means K to K to 12, it is educational occupancy. However, like university and college, it is higher education, which is the university is under the B occupancy. But I have a question. So when you're designing auditorium in university building, do you think it is B occupancy or A occupancy? You have to be know about the, some auditorium is more than 50 people. So it is the A occupancy, it's not the B occupancy. So simply your classroom is more than 50 people, it has to consider as A occupancy, it's not a B occupancy. Okay? So this is a very important to designing the some your program basically from the this classification. I think you have to be know about the, this concept. And E, edu e is education. So it includes the facility by six or more person at any one time for educational purpose. It can include daycare and K-12 educational facility. So universe seems like E, educational category. However, it is B category. And F is like a factory. So F at occupancy, it place the where goods are manufactured or repaired. It is mostly moderate permeability and non-combustible materials. What is non-combustible? It's not firing it. So it means they just conserve non-hazardous material in the F category. If you have a more hazardous material, more explosive material, it is under H, H occupancies. You can see the H occupancies here. It is treat high hazard involving material which is toxic, corrosive, and highly flammable and explosive. So when your factory treated these types of the material, it has to be under H occupancy. And what is about I occupancy? I is institutional. So institutional mostly cover the hospital and jail and custodial care. So what is about I? Occupant under care of other, so they need uh, assistance to evacuating during the emergencies. So as I talk about it, so when you have a fire in a space, hospital, the patient, they need assistance escaping from the space. When you have in the fire in a jail, prison, the people have to be escaping from the guardians, right? So that's why. So I occupancy usually very strict the fire requirement for designing the, the space. What is about the M occupancy? M is mercantile. M is usually under the store, market, service station, and sales room. It is the mercantile and usually shows the goods are displayed and sold. So let's talk about R occupancy. The R is the residential. You must find that R occupancy around you. So it is apartment building and dormitories, fraternity, hotel, and the family, single family house. But it is mostly provide accommodation for overnight staying. But have to be remember, it's not including the group I. You remember what is group I? Group I is institutional occupancy. It is including the hospital, custodial, and jail. So it is have to be under I occupancy. It's not including the, the R occupancy, even if provide overnight stay. Okay? So you have to be understanding the what is difference between the group I and group R. And what is about S occupancy? S is storage. It placed where items are stored unless consider it high hazard. So if you have a high hazard storage area and room, it is considered as H occupancy. S is kind of a just provide not consider it high hazard the material. What is about the U? Group new occupancy is utility and miscellaneous program. It used the intent for the structure of an accessory character and not classified in any specified occupancy. You mostly can find out the uh, U occupancy in 
agricultural building, carport, greenhouse, stable, tank, and tower. So now we talk about construction type. Um, it is categorized by building structure assemblage, it relating on the level of fire resistance for the building structure. IBC provide the minimum fire rating ratio, which is a fire rating protection depending on the construction type. So today I'm introducing about the five construction type. IBC categorized the five construction type depending on the fire rating requirement. It said about level of fire resistance for the building structure. So type one construction required the most fire resistant material and type five is the most le the least the fire resistant material requirement. Depending on the, your the project type, depending on the, your occupancy, you can choose the proper construction type for the project. So let's look at the, some construction type one. Construction type one is fire resistive and non-combustible building structure. So what kind of material is for the non-combustible material? It is mostly metal, steel, and the concrete. Okay. So type one A, mostly you can find in high-rise building and group I occupancy. You remember it is for the jail and hospital. It require more fire resistant. So that's why when you build the hospital, you need the type one A or type one B construction. Type one B is commonly found in mid-rise office and group R building, which the residents also need lots of fire protection because it's easy to spreading the fire between the unit. So means type one A have to be most fire resistive material. You, you have to consider and type 1B is next consideration for the fire. What is about the type 2A and type 2B? Type 2 is lower degree of a fire resistance than type 1. It is commonly found in a school building for type 2A and type 2B you mostly found in the commercial building. But you have to be remember what is different between the type 2A and type 2B Type 2A protected non-combustible material and type 2B unprotected non-combustible material. It means you already remember what is about non-combustible material like a concrete and steel. But protected means you still need a protection over the concrete beam or metal beam. So we talk about this protection method next year. But type 2B you don't need uh, this protection. You, it means you can expose the, this metal outside. So you just kind of an understanding about the concept for now, and then we more talk about the what is protected uh, the material from the your structure. So we talk about uh, this fire rating, the material, the next year and next semester. And type three construction is the type of construction in which the exterior wall are of non-combustible material and interior building element are of any material permitted by this code. So simply understanding about the type 3, it is have to be using non-combustible material outside. But interior, you can use any material. Okay, but it is have to be permitted by code. Type 4, it is non-combustible material exterior wall. Okay, and you can use the heavy timber interior element. Okay. But have to be remember when you're using the type 4 construction, you have to be exposed to the this structure member to the space. It means interior structure material made of solid or laminated wood with no concealed space. So no finished ceiling. So so just kind of understanding about what is the difference between the type 4 and type 5 you might be understanding type 4 have to be using heavy timber structure without the finished ceiling so mostly you found in the old factory and warehouse in the using the this type 4 construction so usually they expose the structure right and type 5 and type 5b uh, it is construction 
type of con is construction, which is the structure element in the exterior wall and interior wall are of any material permitted by this code. So means you can use the combustible material outside and inside. It is mostly timber structure, right? Type 5A commonly used in the construction of a new apartment building. Usually very lower level apartment building. And type 5B commonly single family house and garage. Okay? So from the, this one, you mostly find that the type, type 5A, type 5B construction in Ames, most of you apartment construction in Ames using the type 5A construction. Everything just using the timber, the structure, and then timber finish, right? So, because it's cheap and much e fast to build, and easy to build as well. That's why it's pretty popular kind of material when you consider as the lower level apartment. But it has also a lot of advantage or disadvantage. So when you talk about the timber lecture this year, we talk about what is about the advantage about the timber structure, what is about the disadvantage of the timber structure. So now we checked this IBC table 601. Um, you can just find out this IBC book from the, the internet. You can simply Google IBC. You can find out the actual IBC book from the, the ICC provided it. Um, you don't need to purchase the book because it's pretty big and expensive for the student. I think for during the student years, you better to just kind of searching the the this code from the internet. But after graduate, I'm highly recommend to purchase one of the books because um, it much helps to understanding and then sometimes it's much easier to find out the code from the book rather than internet. So, but the, during the school years, you just kind of find out this code from the internet. I think it's enough for the 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 code issues. Um, so we talk about the table 601 in IBC. The IBC shows the minimal fire resistant layering requirement for the building element, which is the building, the material, and the component. The what is the fire resistant layering? We talk about the construction type. Depending on the construction type, it de deciding about the minimum fire, the protection hours. So what is about these, the minimum fire protection hours? So it is the duration of withstanding the fire by passive fire protection system. So it means active fire protection system is sprinkler, right? And passive fire protection system material itself have to be withstanding the fire. This can be, it has to be quantified simply as a measure of the time. So you can just simply see that this that the table is set about the three and one and zero. What is the meaning about it? The your material can resist three hour fire protection and then this is a one hour fire protection. It shows the hour, it shows the simply as a measure of the time, it shows the protection to spread the fire and stand the building for a while. So means three hour means they can stand three hour from the fire. One hour means this material can stand one hour from the fire. So we just talk about the, this material and this fire rating minimum requirement more next year because it's kind of a little bit more advanced stuff to understanding about the building code. But you have to be understanding about the basic concept. What is meaning of this hour time-based number? It is two hour. It is one hour. This is a simply as a measure of a time. It protects to spread the fire and stand the building for a while. So two hours can standing from the fire and one hour standing from the fire. So this is a kind of number to understanding how you propose the proper the fire rating hours depending on the construction type to find out the building component. So we talk about this building component more next year. And then we talk about the separation distance. Let's talk about the fire separation distance. You can see the left building located in the compact and dense city. And right building is located on the open landscape. For left building, we need to consider fire rating 
based on the distance between the project building and neighbor. But the right building, you don't need to consider about the neighbor building because the building only standing on the nature, right? So we talk about the, this compact city condition. So in a dense context, you have to be considered about the fire separation with a neighbor building in a dense area. So when you're having a fire from the, your neighbor building, you have to be protect this fire spreading from the neighbor building to the, your building. So means you have to be provide proper the fire rating exterior wall to protect this fire spreading from the, your neighbor. So this is a called the separation distance. How much hour you require for the for designing the exterior wall? How you find out? So this requirement you can find out from the table 602. So when you see the this table, you can see the fire separation distance. Okay, just a second. How much feet distance from the neighbor building, and construction type, and occupancy here. So basically, understanding about the occupancy and construction time, and you know about the fire separation distance, you can decide how much fire layering required for the, your exterior wall. Okay. So I just give you the example here. Your project is office occupancy and nine feet from the neighbor building, and you you have a five A construction, which is a protected wood structure. What is the minimum fire rating requirement for the exterior wall? So you just simply designing how much fire rating requirement for the this exterior wall for the, your project. Okay. So I already provide these the minimum request from the your client. Now you can just calculating what is the minimum requirement hour for the, your exterior wall design. So I give me the one minute. So you can just find out the answer by yourself. Okay. I think this is not very difficult because you already know about the the distance from the neighbor building is said nine feet from the neighbor building. So you can say fire separation distance nine feet is here. Right? And then your construction type is the type A construction. So means this is a type 1A and then this is others. But type 5A means it's not type 1A. It means it is under others category. Okay? So means you have to choose the others then you have to be know about the, your occupancy. Your occupancy is bank occupancy. What is occupancy for the bank? It is B occupancy, right? So you can simply find the B occupancy here. You can occupancy the B, okay? And you have other type of construction, which is the type 5A construction. When you simply follow here, then your exterior wall required the one hour minimum separation from the your neighbor building. So means you have to provide the proper the assemblage to protect the one hour fire protection. So we talk about the, this minimum, how you can protect the fire using the material. So don't worry about the, how you can protect the, your assemblage for now, because about the, we have to more talk about the, some different material to use to protect the fire. How you can make in the one hour protection, how you can make in the two hour protection. Okay. So we can just gonna review one more time. The your occupancy is bank, which is you can choose in the B occupancy here, and then your distance is about the nine feet from the neighbor building, and the your construction type is the type five, which is the one A in the top, and then other construction type is others. So simply comparing the this one, you can find that the one hour protection for the, your project, and then so from the your construction type and occupancy you can decide your project height and project area. It is called allowable height and area. Um, if you have more fire legislative construction, which is the type one construction, 
you can build your project bigger and taller, right? Because you're, you have more fire protection, of course, you can build higher and taller and bigger. So simply understanding about this one, more fire resistive construction, which is like a type 1 or type 2 construction, if you're more able occupant, what is about able occupant? It's so more about the, like you, you guys kind of more able occupant, it's much easier to escaping from the space when you're having the emergency. So when these two satisfy, your building can be bigger and taller because it is the much better fire protection and the occupancy is also easy to escaping from the space. However, if your construction type is laid less fire resistive element like a type 5 construction for your occupant requiring the assistant like a hospital. In this case, your building cannot be bigger and taller. Your building can be smaller and shorter. Okay, this is a basic concept to understanding about the construction type and occupancy. Depending on the occupancy and construction combination, you can deciding about the size of the, your building. Okay, so this is a very important concept for understanding about IBC to decide about the height, to deciding about the maximum allowable area, maximum allowable height. So this is IBC table 503. You can see all allowable height, street, and area according as the occupant group and the construction type. When you see the from this table from the IBC, you can just find that the occupancy classification, this is all occupancy here. Okay? And then construction type, you can find out the type 1 construction, type 2 construction, type 3 construction, type 4 construction, type 5 construction. And then you can see the footnote here. You also have to be understanding about the what is NS, what is S, what is about S13R. You can actually find out this meaning from the note here, this footnote here. So you can actually find out the meaning about what is NS, what is about S, what is about S13R. But simply understanding about NS is non-sprinkler building. Your building doesn't have any sprinkler. And S means sprinkler building. Your building has a sprinkler installation. What is about S13R, which is the, it is mostly for the small residential unit. It is required S13R. It's much less the restrict compared to the sprinkler building, but still it has the sprinkler in the system. But it is mostly using for the smaller, the residential, the building, you might consider using the S13R rather than S. Okay. So basically from the these the occupancy and construction type when you know about your the sprinkler system is in your building or not, you can deciding about the the building height. Okay, you can see the building height here. And also you can decide the building area. Okay? So for example, your construct your occupancy is the one um, A one occupancy and then your building has sprinkler building and then your building is the type 2 A construction. In this case you can find out 62,000 square feet per floor. Same thing, if you have in the type 2B and you having the, the A occupancy and you have a sprinkler building, your building can build up to 75 feet. Okay, So you can simply cross check between occupancy and construction type and sprinkler system. You can find out the proper height and maximum allowable area. Okay. So from the these kind of uh, understanding, so I give in the one question. Your client hire you to design non-sprinkler, which is you have to be know about that this is a non-sprinkler building, and two dwelling unit residence, and then built out of wood structure. They do not want to use the fire related element of any kind. So means it is can be type 5 construction. Is no, they have they don't consider about non combustible material, right? They just can use the the combustible material outside and inside, 
and then you can just understanding about the two dwelling unit it can be R occupancy and no sprinkler building so basically from this one you can just check the dispersed code which is the allowable area factor next one you can check allowable number of streets so you can just find out the IBC table 504.4 and then 506.2 so you have to find yourself understanding about this code because I just keep asking you how you can find out the maximum allowable area maximum allowable height from the this IBC book so means you have to be used to understanding how you can find out this table easily from the IBC okay so I just kind of zoom in you just understanding about the two dwelling unit it consider as the R2 and then wood structure it is considered as type 5b construction so from the this information and the non sprinkler building how many story can you build how much area can you build okay so simply understanding about the, it is type 5 construction is pretty difficult to see from the your screen probably but this is a type 5 construction and then we talk about that this is type 5b Okay, this is type 5 construction and then you know about the, this R2 which is the R2 here you can see the occupancy you can find out here R2 and then this is a type 5 V construction and you know about the, this is a non sprinkler building okay because your crime doesn't want to have in a sprinkler in the system and simply find out that this non sprinkler system and R2 here and type 5 V same thing R2 non sprinkler NS system and type 5V and you cross check here so you can find out uh, this number so for the maximum allowable um, area you can build up to 7000 feet uh, 7000 square feet and you can build up to the two-story building okay so you can just find out the maximum allowable height and stories and maximum allowable area it is defined and the decided by the this IBC code so it means to define and deciding about the building code building size and building height you have to be checked IBC and also you have to check the zoning code as well so means zoning require the maximum height and maximum building area as well but we talk about the zoning next year but now we just understanding about the building code okay so building code already deciding about your building size it's not randomly deciding about your building height and not randomly deciding about the building area by yourself you have to be made a decision from the this building code So from the, this number, you find that the, the maximum allowable area and maximum allowable stories. But you have to be remember about it. You can build up to two stories, but you said about the 7,000 here, basically from the, this table. So what is about the 7,000? So this 7,000, you can build up to 7,000 square foot. However, it is per floor. So means you can build up to 7,000 square feet per floor it's not a total area this is very important many people are truly missing the this point so it means 7000 square feet per floor but you can build up to two story right so it means 7000 can build up to the the per floor and you can build up to two story right simply you can calculate it 7,000 times 2 which is you can build up to 14,000 square feet but each floor have to be meaning the maximum 7,000 square feet okay so this is a kind of calculation you can find out the total area and also basically from the the same requirement from the, the client you can actually deciding about the maximum building height as well so from the previous table you found maximum allowable area and maximum allowable the stories but also using the table from the, the IBC table 
the 504.3 you can just find out the maximum floor the I'm um, sorry maximum height from the this table same situation you have R occupancy and then you having the the N has which is the non sprinkler building and you have a type 5 construction so now you find that the 40 number here so means you can build up to 40 feet okay so just kind of simply understanding of the concept everything can found from the the IBC table I provided it so you can even find out that this table from the IBC book during the lab I'm highly recommend to find out the, this table by yourself and you have to find out the, this number by yourself I think this is a very important fundamental starting point to understanding about IBC to find allowable maximum area and allowable maximum the height allowable maximum stories also understanding about the minimum fire rating hours for the, your exterior design depending on the distance between the, your building and neighbor building so today we mostly talk about the concept of IBC right and the basic knowledge about the IBC who published it how it works and what is about the process and who actually the push it to working on the, this IBC and we just kind of talk about the, that kind of a concept of IBC and after that we also talk about the occupancy what is about the meaning of the occupancy and why we need occupancy and also talk about the construction type we talk about the five different construction type so what is about the meaning about the construction type and then how it relating to the fire minimum rating hours and after that we just comparing to the construction type and the occupancy how you can find out maximum allowable maximum floor maximum allowable floor area and maximum height and maximum streets okay which is maximum allowable streets and maximum allowable the height so please understanding about this table and then if you have any question and you want to meet the face to face today I'll be in a rap. I'm more interesting about the, how you read about the table and how you understanding about the IBC further. Please let me know if you have a question. I can meet the face to face or I can meet the Zoom as well. Okay. So anyway, this is the answer for that.